Hey everybody, what is up? Ruben with Texas Water Fishing, and we are out here today at the jetties, Surfside Freeport. Sometimes I say Freeport, sometimes I say Surfside, but it's the same place. Anyway, we have a northeast wind blowing. It feels like it's already kind of shifting east. Um, a lot better condition than we came last time. The water looks a lot cleaner. Um, last time we came out, it was horrible, it was dirty, it was trashy. But I'm gonna start off throwing this cast master style if i don't hit myself in the face spoon i do have affiliate links below you can pick up most of the stuff that i throw and i fish with off amazon um so you can check out those links and click on there don't forget to join patreon um if you're interested in seeing this fishing report early and soon because sometimes let's face it the videos get backed up a little bit so if you want to know what's going on today what i'm doing today then tomorrow you can look on Patreon and you will see a post of my fish report. I also do some kayak launches, some kayak spots. I don't burn spots. So a lot of the fish reports I'll give in general direction, in general information, the area that I'm in. And some, like I say, I will point, I will tell you where I'm where I'm launching and show you my route. But um, yeah, so we're out here fishing myself. Captain Charles! Hey! Dirty Bay! Check him out. He also does guided trips and his information is below as well. Well, let's get going. Already. Nice guys. Oh, careful! You got that one on camera. So, how many times did you fall in today? <laughs> Twice. Man. Twice. The sun's not even up. So, for numbers aren't working for me, man. On the on the on the, uh, on the rocks, man. Converse are slick. Something keeps getting my attention and I hit and you, that rock. You're, you're, you're losing your footing. All right, first cast. And I'll tell you real quick my setup. H2O Express Ethos HD Reel. Tight line braid, I'm digging that. I got a chatter weight on here. 30 pound tight line braid. 30 pound Yozuri leader line, fluorocarbon. And I have a knockoff version of Castmaster. T3 rods, awesome rod. One of my setups. I brought three of them with me. All right, and so we have a concept reel. I have H2O Express solid six rod, a big old crocodile spoon. You can get this spoon on Amazon as well. Chatterweight. We got pages moved through. We got some bait that just moved through. Good. Good. Oh, Spanish mackerel. I think so. So a lot of it, you gotta find what they want, how they want it, what cadence they want. They're here, we see them feeding. They're going, they're go, they're going out of the water chasing bait. Can't tell what they're eating though. Um, sometimes you might have to downsize your lure and go smaller. But it's like they were liking it in the fall. I got several hits of them hitting in the fall. All right, notice that they're eating. Smaller spoons. Smaller spoon. Let's 
that we get better results. There we go. Oh, I lost them. Speckle trout. I mean, a uh, Spanish mackerel. Oh, well, I thought we'd get those Spanish mackerel for sure. They were coming out of the water and blowing up everything. Charles switched to live shrimp, kind of fishing close to the rocks. Um, I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm thinking put a live shrimp on and see if I can get a couple sheephead. Uh, I've been casting nonstop for the last two hours. Closest I got was that fish that came up right here. Everything else is hit, hit and miss. All right, so what I'm using here is like a, uh, it's like a crappie cork. Goes on here, you have the hook, have a little bit of weight ahead of it, kind of hope to help it pull down. And then this slip cork will slide up and down and it'll come all the way down to right here, giving me about eight foot of line to fish with. And I can move this little move to adjust this kind of slide it wherever I want it and there's a little bead that's gonna come up hit that and it's gonna stop the cork Well, everybody, you know, that was it. That was all for the day. We went out there. We saw so much Spanish mackerel jumping. Um, it looked like most of them were between 8 and maybe about 15, 16 inches. Uh, but a lot of smaller ones. And they were coming out of the water. And they were chasing a lot of glass minnows. And uh, it took us a while to try to figure out what, what they were banging on and hitting on. Um, <clears throat> we really were trying to figure out, I was really trying to figure out the bite. I couldn't figure it out. Um, I threw all different kind of spoons. Uh, Charles had some little glass minnows, tandem glass minnows that he threw as well. And we were getting, they were tapping, they were hitting. Um, I had some really good drags and they were they were getting off. Uh, they were spitting, spitting the hook or just not taking the lure, uh, which is weird. I never experienced that before with uh spanish mackerel and one of the things when i was talking to cody um who goes offshore you know he's a captain the offshore he does a lot of offshore stuff so he has caught a lot of fish and a lot of spanish mackerel in his day and so when i was talking to him 
and you know telling him what was going on you know the first thing he asked me if i downsize my spoons it, or was i you know trying to fish it different changing the cadence how i was retrieving and yes i did all that it seemed like i was when i was really real fast and I was letting it drop and really real fast and letting it drop they were hitting it on the drop um and i explained that to him but one of the things that i did notice and uh i ended up taking it off was my chatter weight now my line around my chatter weight was was uh nicked up it was uh it got hit a few times and the line on the other side of my main line my braided line it got nicked up as well so i'm like look they're hitting my chatter weight i said right cody and he said yes you don't want nothing on your line you don't even want to have a swivel like i have this norton quick twist he said i wouldn't put a swivel on it i wouldn't put a norton quick twist on it i wouldn't put i definitely wouldn't put a chatter weight i wouldn't put anything because a lot of times what the Spanish Mac will do the first thing they see that runs across their face. That's what they attack. Even something as small as a Norton Quick Twist or a Swivel. And, <clears throat> you know, and then like I said, you know, I was throwing, I had a couple um, crocodile spoons. This is one ounce. Uh, this got hit a few times. Uh, the two ounce got hit a couple times. Uh, typically, I like typically I like to throw a cast master or like a cast master style of spoon. Um, this is about an ounce, and this little one is the one when I had the the um the the speckled trout <laughs> where I had the Spanish mackerel on and I lost them. And now that was the now whenever you're using any of these spoons before I say anything else, when you're using the spoons, make sure you change out that split ring and change out the hook to a three or four X. Just because if you do get into some of those bigger fish, they, they can straighten your, your hook out and you'll lose the fish. Um, now, I didn't try any of my Texas Rattling Jake Heads out there. But um, I, I, I don't know why they weren't in my box. Uh, but um, I am going to try those out next time. If you're if you're not familiar with them, they has an eye on them. And then he'll also put like a rattle puts places a rattle in them and here's another another style but um yeah you know i have my box it's that time of year you know i know a lot of people do have boxes rattle traps different kind of lures but i also after going out there and seeing that they're hitting on a lot of glass metal i also made myself a little glass metal box too just for some soft plastic and stuff that looks and, and similar to glass metal that i'll be trying out there next time i'll probably maybe put on a tandem uh the problem with throwing plastics or throwing a lot of the smaller stuff is you can't get it out as far as you can. We'll throw in maybe a one ounce or a two ounce, and that's kind of what we saw. We saw that they were they would push close to the rocks and they were far away. Then they would push close to the rocks and they were far away. And then before they were just like really far away, we couldn't even get to them. Not even with the two ounce spoon. The other mistake that I made was my rod selection. Um, I love my T rod, my my tap to tackle rod. It's my favorite rod. I love fishing with. It's very very sensitive. And that's the one that I caught that Spanish macaron. Um, it just had too much bend in it. Um, when I went to go lift it up out of the rocks, uh, either that or I need to get those cleats and get down there so I can net it. But um, it just has too much bend to it for me to be able to hoist it and, and, and pop it up like some of my other uh, maybe medium, medium heavy, or maybe even heavy rods. But um, I definitely you know take some medium heavy or medium rods out there that don't have that much bend in in the rod itself especially around the tip because then you can't you can't hoist them out and like you saw I, I was reeling that that guy in and he got a burst of energy and swam right to the rock right when i was reeling it in i was just trying to keep up and he just came off and that was it that was a wrap uh fish with light bait caught a bunch of little baby sheep head um charles captain charles even caught uh a little small angel fish as well but you know we had a good time we saw some pompano out there getting caught we saw a couple of nice specks being caught um just nothing on the end that we were um but we had a really 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 good time um i appreciate you guys for going along for the ride don't forget please subscribe to the channel push that bell notification thumbs up make a comment if you have one or something you want to share i'll be like yeah Ruben, you're an idiot you should have never had a, a chatter weight on when you saw those 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 smacks out there um don't know what you're thinking i don't know what i was thinking i don't understand why i couldn't figure that out before but i didn't 
you know, I, I never claim to be an expert. You know, we all live and learn, and well, I learned a hard lesson that day. Don't forget, join Patreon if you want to continue to support the channel even more. I appreciate all my Patreons out there, and if you want to be a Patreon today, there is a link, a link for everything that I fish with in the description section of this video. Till next time, I hope you catch me hooking up. Thanks.